All right, y'all. Welcome back to the episode and live stream here in Let's Build Twitter. I am doing some extra live streams. I'm going to try to because we have family coming over here in the next month or so. It's going to take up some time, take up a week or two here and there. So I just want to make sure we have all the content all ready to go. This may or may not be a shorter one. We'll find out. It just depends on how far I feel like going and, and when I get tired. So as always, I'm Ethan Encoder. And if you guys do want access to the private repository, there is a link in the description down below. With that being said, let's hop into it. So last episode, we refactored a bunch of stuff that we can get our um, whatever this is called. I guess it's still a little bit broken, so that's interesting. We need to look into why this isn't working, but we refactored this a bit. We can look in to see why spaces aren't working. Are spaces working in this one, I wonder? Okay, so new line characters aren't working. I don't know if new line characters are working before, so that's interesting. But anyway, we'll have to put that in the backlog. So basically refactor some stuff so we can have these guys down here as well as having this in here. I don't know what's going on with the enter key. I guess we'll have to take a look at that, but I want to continue working on this. We can probably need to do a little bit more refactoring. It looks like we need to fix whatever's wrong with this guy. So with that being said, I guess let's hop into our front end. Obviously we need to get this all kind of styled up and then we'll kind of go from there. So let's hop back into our code. And we were working on the create body, create reply body. Where's the actual TSX? There we go. We'll have to go back to that bottom in a little bit. But now we have this create body reply. And we're going to need to bring in some other stuff, I believe, as well. So if we actually, I guess, go into our feed post creator, if I can actually find the real feed post creator, let's go to that and feed post creator. So we're going to need to bring in like the images and the poll. So I guess what we can do as well is we just go ahead and bring this in and we might do a little bit of refactoring on this as well we're gonna need this in case there are any images so i think we had these below the text area but let's just look again i forgot already yeah just below the text area so we come back into our body we can add this under our text area and now we're gonna need to make some changes so i don't have the state i do have post and logged in and now let's go ahead and set up a state i guess or i'm gonna call this feed post and we can go ahead and pass in feed post, feed post, feed post. Swap all these with feed posts. And let's see. And maybe we call the other thing reply or something. I'm not sure. But I want to make a distinction. This is a post from the feed page that we clicked on. We could have called it at current post as well. But it's fine. And then here we need just the state.post. So maybe I just go ahead and say const post state is equal to use selector states root states and then we'll pass back the state dot post we'll get back our post slice state basically what is your issue okay so this needs to now be post and feed post i could type post okay cool so now we have our post state so we can say post state I think we can say post date dot current post images and here we can also say post date dot current post here we can say post date dot current post dot images go ahead and import this we can say here I think post date dot current post and same thing there and we can do this now should fix that and we have one more issue so here this would be feed post So now the question is, can we get images showing up properly and can we get a poll showing up properly? And also we should probably make sure we can add a GIF and stuff just to make sure. And we'll also need to go ahead and probably debug what's going on with the text area. I'm not sure. It's actually probably has something to do with the convert post content to elements, but I don't know why it's not actually getting new line character. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop into here. Let's just take a peek. So if we go ahead and add, add an image, let's just add this. Oh yeah, and we have this issue as well. So what we'll to deal with that? Can we add more images? So let's add a couple more images. I think we can. I think we can add multiple. Yep. So that is still working fine. 
Cool, that's good to know. Let's, more, let's make sure our GIF's working. So how does GIF actually work? I think I'm just gonna put the GIF over top. So we need to make the GIF modal higher up in priority, I guess. So let's see what GIF uses. I don't even know where GIF is, to be honest. Uh, GIF modal, I don't know what GIF uses, so this might be a problem. GIF modal uses a bottomless modal. So maybe our bottomless modal, we come into bottomless modal.css. Maybe the bottomless modal box, we do a Z index. I don't know what our modal one is, so let's just check modal to see if modal has one. So this one doesn't have a Z index. What if we say Z index two, and then on the bottomless modal Z, Z index three, theoretically this should be enough to this but you know sometimes it doesn't work okay this is gonna be a pain in the backside you love to see it unless it's because this is one well, we put this at like 10 and this at like 20 i'm just trying things it might be because this one's also at one or something yeah but that makes everything way darker as long as the gif shows up let's just see if the gif will even work so if we open up the gif and i guess we'll just go to this and click on this nothing happened you provided a checked prop to a form field without an on change handler i don't think that's the issue but maybe it is does it work in here so this is working fine it's still complaining about this whenever we go and display modal drop down what actually happens i wonder or not my drop down i'm sorry our gif modal toggle auto play attach gif to post so post image, we let images equal to this, we dispatch the image, and then we update display GIF. So we close out of it. So we should have a GIF attached to the post. Is it because it's going to the post instead of the reply? So here we just attach this, and then we update current post with images and value. So maybe what we do is we modify this update current post, and this is gonna make the update reply obsolete. So if we go into our post slice, I'm gonna do something really stupid, and I'm just straight up gonna delete the update reply, wherever that is. This guy, so this update current reply, and we might also need to do something with this as well. I'm not percent sure, we'll see. Images are gonna be interesting, but let's just get GIFs working first. And let's also remove it from down here because otherwise it's still gonna be able to be used. I mean, it should be causing an issue, but let's get rid of this. We still want to be able to initialize current reply. So now in our create post text area, let's see. So we don't need this anymore. And here, it doesn't matter what the location is. We can still just update current post, right? It's not going to matter because it just takes in a name and value. So that's fine. So now inside of our post slice, we need to go ahead and actually update this reducer to, to check whether or not it's a reply or it's a post. So here, we can basically do this. So like, yeah, if state.current post is this, otherwise, otherwise I can say else if state dot and this one's current reply whoops state dot current reply and we'll do the same exact thing so we'll say state dot current reply like a type is equal to dot dot, dot state dot current reply comma action dot payload can't type dot name and action dot payload dot value so now we can update either or and we'll just make sure we check each of those so theoretically this should fix the gift thing fairly simply i think let's just see so if we come in here and we update the gif and we click a random gif hmm it's not working because let's go back in here so this should be current reply and why you mad is possibly undefined i think we just wrap this entire thing make sure current reply exists so we're gonna do this we probably don't need to do the pfp part but it is what it is so we're gonna say post states dot current reply question mark and this might be mad because it wants to be wrapped inside let's we'll wrap it inside this do that and then obviously we need to add if it's not we're just gonna go ahead and do one of these Probably not the cleanest way to do this, but it is what is. Cool. So now we can just say current post post date dot current reply. 
make sure there's a current reply. I'll go, this part doesn't really matter, right? We can just say this. And we can also say current post images. So here, what we might end up doing for this, we might just make a current reply images, which is going to get a little bit messy as well. But I mean, maybe not. We could probably do something very similar inside the post date. So here again, so instead of current post, we'd want post date reply poll. And again, we could probably update stuff, but I think we might have to look to see how this creator poll works. But let's see if the GIF works now at least. Come on, Gary needs a new pair of shoes. And it crashed. Cannot read properties type. And feed utils creator image.tsx. Oh, you know what? Okay. Let's find this feed utils because the post itself is undefined. So this is going to have some consequences I didn't think about. So it's down here. It might be because this passed. We might need to do this. We might need to wrap this. So if this. Or we have state dot current reply and state dot current reply dot images. Why is it complaining about current reply dot length? Whoops. Greater than zero. Oh, whoops. And it still didn't get rid of the typo. Cool. All right, so we'll check to make sure we'll check to see if current reply exists or if the current post exists. And there might be some other random ones here or there that might have an issue that we just need to play around with. So now we need to go into I'm guessing this has to do with the images. Let's find the feed post images. Yeah, so let's see here. Remove image, dispatch, edit image, the image itself comes from here an image is being passed in as a prop which means it'd be coming from images so let's go into images and images is just taking this i'm guessing from yeah current post image so post dates dot current post images length equals zero creator feed post creator image otherwise we're going to do some other funky stuff so this is like manually doing the gif basically so what we can do is we could do something like a, with a question mark, which I don't know if this is going to work either 100%. But more or less, what we could do is we could do something like this. Let's clean this up. This is going to get a little bit messy, but what can you do? Here, instead of doing this, we can say question mark. If this is true, we'll go ahead and say post date dot current post dot images zero dot image URL. Otherwise, we'll do post state dot current reply dot and then so this is going to get a little bit weird we're going to wrap it i don't know if it's going to work post date dot current reply dot images question mark then we'll say post date dot current reply dot images zero dot image url and then otherwise we'll return this it seems like it allowed it to copy this. Like I said, this is going to get really crazy and gross, but we're going to just keep chipping away at these like bugs and stuff. Okay, that button does nothing because the actual feed post creator image, if we go to the feed post creator image, so whenever we remove image, it just checks this and then it dispatches this. So what we can do here again is we can just do one of these, wrap this, or state dot current reply and state dot current uh, reply dot images dot length greater than zero. Don't know why this is mad. Current reply this should be current reply. That's why. And this one's just calling update. So that should be fine. This one, what to do about this one? So we need to come back and deal with this later. We'll leave that as is. But this should get rid of the GIF, hopefully. Cool. That's working. And let's make sure that this is 
So this is not disabling these because we need to check for the reply to. So that adds another layer of complexity that I just absolutely love. So now GIF's working. Poll also does not work. Emojis is scuffed, so we need to kind of figure out how to fix emojis. And they're also not doing anything because they're going to the current post. Scheduling pops up. I don't know if it actually works. So now the next issue, let's see. Cannot read undefined image URL. Okay, so we found a new issue, so that's cool. Again, okay, we're just going to work through issues, and that's unfortunately probably what this night's going to be about, is I just want to get this working. So what's going on with the feed post creator images? So, cannot read image URL. It might be inside of create image container, actually. So I'm guessing it's actually this create image con uh, container, which is coming from the feed utils. Is it because current post is undefined? Let's try this current reply dot images dot length equal to zero. I don't think this is going to actually. I don't think this is going to change anything. So if we did an or, so if either of these is zero, this would be undefined, which is false. And this would be true, which would be true. Okay. That did it. So now we have the next issue, which is whenever we click on the image, it's popping up in both places. So this means inside of our post slice, we probably want a reply images instead. So we'll say current reply images, which is a file array. And this is going to complicate matters even more. So it's going to be chef's kiss. So now current replies. So here, Current reply images will be empty. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go down to current post update current post images. And we're just going to check to see, whoops, I'm sorry. If our state dot current post, then we'll set this. And otherwise, else if. And this will be interesting to see if there's a post currently. We might need to set up some way of clearing out this, the post or something. That's kind of like a weird edge case I just thought of. States. Oops, we need to say states is equal to dot 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 states and then current reply images and i spelled reply wrong i just realized let's fix that so we'll make sure it says reply and we'll make sure this says reply wherever this guy is go back down to where we were update current post images current reply images is equal to action dot payload and of course we'll return the state so now we need to figure out where we display these. So this is probably the images, right? And this is where things get screwy. Cause now if we refresh and we actually add images, nothing's gonna happen, I don't believe. So if we go into here and since we don't have a post, you can see nothing happens. Still mad about this. I thought I fixed that. Oh, it's cause I added new thing. Okay, whatever. So now inside of our images again, so this is gonna have an image container. So what I'm thinking maybe, is we have two image containers. So maybe we have a post image container and we have a const reply image container. Do the same thing, use memo and create image container. I can't read, this is supposed to be post date dot current reply images. And this one will watch the post date dot current reply images. Maybe we break this up into three separate things. So maybe we say post date dot current post and post date dot current post dot images dot length equal to zero 
And if that's the case, we'll have another and, and we'll have the image container. Actually, it will be image container. It'll be post image container. So if those ones are true, we'll do this. Now the issue is going to be, how do we display the GIF, right? So maybe we could check to see if either of those are equal to one, right? And if that's the case, then we'll display this. And then we'll say post. So now we'll have the, uh, I'm not, uh, post dates dot current reply and post dates dot current reply dot images dot length is equal to zero and and then here we will have the reply image container and then basically we need like a an if the post date dot we can basically do this except in reverse so if post date uh not equal to zero or this is not equal to zero we'll say and and we'll take this feed post guy here actually we want this whole div copy this div Paste it in there, clean this up. Maybe we do this. So we can get rid of this. That might be a little bit cleaner as well. Now here's the question, is it gonna work? Let's add an image to our reply. Nothing happened, terrific. This might need to be and maybe. So now whenever we add an image, why is it still going up there? Although this got rid of this. So create reply body. Oh, you know what? This should be reply images. We'll do this if state dot current post images dot length is greater than zero and that. We'll do an or here. So let's go to the end of this or state dot current post this would be reply images dot length is greater than zero and state dot current post or current reply images zero dot type is equal to image slash gif so then it shouldn't even try to read the second part if the length is less. So I think it does that that way. There we go. So that is working now, it seems like. We click on this. It's fine. Closes out of it. We click on this. I'll be interested now because I think there's technically an, a current post. And this is kind of scuffed right here. So yeah. Yeah. I kind of wonder if that was going to be a problem. It's going to be a bug that I'm going to just stick in my back pocket. So that's an issue that we'll have to deal with later. I just want to get everything working. So I think that's technically most of the images working at this point. I don't know what else there would be for images. They can be displayed. Now, obviously, we need to do the poll. We'll also need to figure out how to deal with schedule. So we post creator poll. So that just displays that. Let's go to the cluster again and see what the cluster does. So the cluster. Whenever we click on the poll, I'm guessing it just, so it just opens up, oh, it dispatches create poll. So we're going to need to see if this or state dot post dot current reply. So we'll check either of those. And then inside of create poll, we'll go ahead and deal with that. So let's go into our post slice and let's find create poll. We need to check to see which one is active. So we can just say like if, and we can say, State dot current post. So if there's a current post, then we can let post do this and do that. And again, this will be kind of finicky. Otherwise, otherwise our state dot current reply. And here we can say let reply equal to JSON dot parse and JSON dot stringify state dot current reply. I don't exactly remember why I did it this way. Maybe I'm just silly and I didn't need to. Oh, I, oh yeah, it's because we can't modify the state directly like this. So reply 
dot 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 reply and then we'll add the poll which that should be perfectly legal state is equal to dot 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 state and we'll say current reply colon reply and we can just return the state so again we can just check to see whether we're making a poll a post or reply and now we should be able to make poll just like that cool the last thing would be schedule so again with schedule i don't know if this should this is even what it's supposed to look like who knows so a schedule we'll have to do is also figure out what we do this so i'm guessing there's just this actually might just be another oh is a set schedule date this is pretty simple we can do the same thing else if and state dot current reply let reply Ooh. okay it's fine i think Poll date though might also be an issue so let's set this while i'm at it else if state.current reply and state.current reply dot poll so we'll say let reply equal to json.parse and json oops let's say equal to json.parse json.stringify state dot current reply and let's say let poll equal to reply dot poll poll is equal to dot 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 poll and end time action dot payload okay and then we'll say reply equal to dot 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 reply and we'll say poll add that poll in and then state is equal to dot 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 state and current reply is equal to reply whoops so update that state we also need to update this schedule date so let's finish this dot parse json dot stringify and this will be states whoops like a type state dot current reply and then we'll go ahead and say reply is equal to dot 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 reply and we're going to say scheduled dates apparently it doesn't have a scheduled date although it might be because it's it's an any technically action dot payload and we'll set scheduled so scheduled like a type a true and then we can just return the state what is wrong with this dot 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 reply i don't know what the issue is hopefully it works fine we still need to set the state though so state equal to dot 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 states and then we'll say current reply is reply and that should set the schedule date we're only going to really know if this works until we actually get the submit button working at this rate i don't know if we're going to get the submit wa button working because we've had so many bugs but is that everything from our submit cluster so we can add an image we can add gif we can add this emojis is scuffed so whenever we actually have an emoji it's supposed to pop up to the bottom left and this might be because so let's go to our cluster again yeah so emoji svg just says open emoji modal okay and i think the emoji modal is in feed or something i don't remember it or it might be on post let's see it's not on post is it on feed post creator then let's find feed post creator again was out of a couple things feed post creator yeah so let's say display emojis and state dot post dot current post so if there's a current post then we want it in here otherwise we're going to want to go into a current reply body and we want to add this to the bottom here maybe uh we can probably set it here and otherwise we'll go we need to set this up but this will be state we have a post date right so it'd be post date and this will be post date dot current reply we need to set up a display emoji 
So this will be const display emoji equal to use selector state root state return state dot modal dot display emojis. Then we need to actually bring in this. So let's go ahead and bring in our emoji dropdown. And I think we set this up to be based off of the actual component that's in, which just might not work. Let's refresh. It's showing up, but I wonder if it's showing up underneath maybe, because it's saying emoji dropdown should be this. So let's go to the emoji dropdown really quick, wherever that is, might be in components. CSS, the index is 50. Let's bump it up to 100. Still not displaying, or at least we can't see it. Oh, you know what? I bet we need to go into the create reply body and set this to a relative position. Let's go into the CSS. Let's grab the create reply body. So let's say position relative. Okay. So there we go. Now, not exactly where I wanted it. So that's an issue. We could move this to the, we can move this to the cluster. And I guess we have the button, everything paste it in there. Let's go ahead and make this. So let's bring in import use selector. And let's import our root state. Okay. And then let's import this guy and let's say const and we'll say we'll do display emojis first is equal to use selector and we'll say state root states return state dot modal dot display emojis const and this will be post state equal to use selector state. Let's make it lowercase root state. And then this will be state dot post and create reply bottom. If we go into the CSS, let's say create dash reply dash bottom. And we should be able to say position relative on this. We'll see where it pops up now. So emoji, no idea where it's at. It's right here. I can see it. It's kind of, it's going to kind of be in a weird location. Well, I don't want to get bogged down too much more with this. We can debug this later. I want to get this looking nice at least. So let's go ahead and style this up and then we can come back and, and work on this later. So I'm going to close out of a lot of stuff because we have way too much stuff open right now. Okay, clean that up. So we need to do this guy. So this needs a class name. We could probably steal the same class name. So let's just grab this image. So this copy this and paste it on this image here. And that'll clean that up. But let's go ahead and do the current reply body and let's bring it in here, do this. And this will be, of course, with 100% height. We'll probably just fit content and we do want a display flex. And we might just justify content start and align items uh, start maybe. Okay, so we need a little bit of padding. I don't remember what the padding is that we put on the other thing. So if I just say adding 12 PX, that lines it up. But I think we just want padding left. 12px. Cool. I think that looks good. Now this guy needs to come up. This box shouldn't have any padding on it. We could add some padding on the top or some margin on the top of this guy to bring it down. What if we just do this? This is really hacky. I don't know if it's going to work either, but style. Margin top is let's say like 8px this might not even work so it did work it adds a weird space under that but i might call that fine actually 
Now, this doesn't quite line up here, so we need to add a little bit of space. So to do that, we might need to wrap this text area in a div. Last name equal to create reply body post content. Copy this, bring it in, and I just copied white space. Thank you, VS Code. I love that feature. And what we can do is take this reply body post content. So we could say width is 88%. Height is fit content. We might need a gap on it. I don't know. That didn't do anything. We could just add a padding. We could just say width 100%. And just add some padding. We'll start out with 12, 8 PX maybe. And just see where we're at. Just padding left on this. Otherwise it kind of scuffs some stuff. Did I name this the same thing? So this would be reply body post. Uh, so original. Let's try this. Let's also make sure that we save this. So that scuffed everything so that's cool so i said width back to 88 percent padding is not doing anything this is still not saved i hit save but okay computer um i think that's probably fine i think that lines up pretty good and it lines up pretty good there so i think that's good now let's do the bottom well, actually let's let's see what it looks like with like images hello this is a reply Maybe we add an image. Hmm. It's because of the display flex. So what we need to do is wrap these two. This was already hard enough for name, naming all of this. Div last name equal to create reply body reply content group maybe these names are just great and this one needs to be copy this this and do the same thing we don't want the padding though we want to get rid of this that should fix that issue i think yep okay now the image is there it's too wide so we need to go into our i don't i think it's probably inside the modal go into the modal css content no overflow here so it must be the reply body.css figured this would be where the scroll is yeah okay overflow x is hidden there we go cool so that's fine. Now let's get this kind of uh, set up. Let's go ahead and hop into, this would be the bottom, I guess. So let's go into our bottom.tsx. So create reply bottom. I think this would be pretty simple. I think we just need to, so this will be width 100%, height 100%, and we will display Flex, justify content, we'll space between this guy, and we will align items in the center. And if we need to add some padding on the left and right, we will. Yes, we definitely need some padding on the left and right. Adding left, 12px, 16px, adding right, 16px, we might need more padding right because of the way well now it's fine and then we need to make this into the round button so let's grab scared of this move that over grab the submit reply button and this is going to be fun doing the submit reply so dot submit reply button so width will be let's call it like 70 width 70 px the height will be 36 px the border radius will be, I guess, 18 PX. Border will be none. We also need to figure out how to enable and disable this, so that's gonna be fine. So that's border none, that's fine. 
we might just set up an active and inactive or something although we want font size set probably to 15 px and font weight set to i think like 800 is pretty thick so now we do need a let's see we also need a cursor pointer actually cursor pointer might depend on yeah cursor pointer depends on whether it's active or not so now i'm going to say uh reply button active this is going to be twitter blue so let's go into our app.tsx and grab twitter blue so blue and so we'll say color is this color actually that'd be background color and then color will be white if it's active we'll have cursor pointer whoops and then we also want reply button whoops active hover and I, I think i want to just do a slightly different shade of this blue so let me grab a shade generator and let me paste this into the shade generator so we're gonna go like 10 percent darker so now we'll say background color is this so just do a tad darker. Now we need to set up whether or not it's active or not, which is going to be a whole nother challenge. That'll be fun. And then we'll say dot reply button inactive. And this one, we're going to need color white still. And then the background color be RGBA. So let me go ahead and convert this hex to RGB. All right, let me grab this. I'm going to use RGB from now on just because it's so much easier but i mean obviously i'm already this far so it's a background color is this like 0.2 probably so now the fun part is determining whether or not this is active so basically what we need to check is three main things we need to check whether or not there's content and does the cluster actually work with whenever we type i want to check that I don't see it. We might need to bring that in. Yes, we do. Okay, so before we get too out of hand, beside the button, let's go back to feed post creator really quick. We need the feed post progress. So let's grab the progress guy. And yeah, we'll take post dates. And this will be dot current and this will be reply. So then we'll also have post date dot current reply. Dot content. This will be reply content. And I love that for us. Dot length divided by two five six. Now it should pop up. And we need to group those now so let's add us a little extra work so we'll go ahead and have a div can i wonder if we can just do this we might just be able to get away with not doing this we might be able to just do one of these guys and it might work okay never mind didn't group it together the way that i wanted to also this is not working properly so that's cool let's make this a div and a div you know what? Making a div might do what we want. Low key. We still need to put display flex on it. So last name equal to. And create. Reply. And this would be submit group again. And that's what we called it in the other one as well. And this will just be like fit content and fit content or something. Uh, reply bottom. And this will be width, will just be fit content. Height, if I could type, will just be fit content. We need display flex on this. We will justify content space evenly and align items in the center. This should deal with this. I swear, I don't know why it's not saving. Also, I think we need to check to see if there's content here. So we need to say post date dot current reply and post date 
dot current reply dot reply content not equal to an empty string. It's a little bit gross. Because we only want to display this guy if there's content. So now it's gone. Now it pops up. We might want to add in here. We might want to go ahead and add a row gap or a column gap of like four pixels or something just to add a little bit of space. Actually, let's go 12. So now we need to get the buttons active or inactive. So our button, I think we yeah had a generate button class and this basically just looked in here. We also had an activate button. So let's just, let's just, I guess, grab this really quick. We can probably more or less use this. So we can use post date, put post date in there. And this will be current reply. So this probably could have been done slightly differently, but it is what it is. So post date dot current reply dot content be reply content. I should name this slightly differently, but I think this is what I ended up getting named on the other thing on uh, Java. So that's why it's like this. Post date dot current. Uh, this would be reply images. Dot length is greater than one. Post date dot current reply. And post date dot current reply dot images. And post date dot current image. So post date dot current reply. I don't know why I had to do all of these over again, because this should all be so return content, which is a let content. So if it's not equal to empty or it's not equal to this. So I don't think we need this here, right? Because we already checked to see if the current reply is true. So we should just be able to get rid of this. We should be able to say post date dot current reply to this question mark and now this would be we need our post button whatever we had this so submit reply button so this would be submit reply button and i think it's like reply button active or something like that so we called it yeah reply button active reply button inactive so here this would be reply button active otherwise we just have submit reply button And this would actually be reply button inactive. So this would be post dates dot, and this would be current reply again. And again, this one is fine. Post dates dot current reply images. We don't need all these ands, I don't think. So this should just be able to be post date dot current reply dot images. Again, I don't think we need this. This can just be post dates and dot current reply because we already checked to make sure that this was true. And this can just be post date dot current reply and this would be reply content and i did fix it up here so now button class name equal to generate button class so active nor deactive is on it button class name generate class name oh returns this that might be okay because it should have submit or it should be reply button inactive i think maybe it is hitting this part and i just scuffed that um color did not get set or background color did not get set for some reason i don't know where the rgb went but okay thank you for that okay seems like it works 
Now, the only thing to do now is let's add a on click to see if it actually disables this. So let's just say const post reply, I guess. We can do e react dot mouse event on an HTML button element. That way we can prevent default here. The very least e dot prevent default. Okay. Let's just um, console dot log the reply. Let's just make sure whenever we are trying to cancel the button, which we need to also go ahead and say disabled equal to activate button. And we need to do on click equal to post reply. So right now, I think we only have methods to create a text reply. So keep that in mind. Go to our console. We got a lot of issues, but if we click this, it prints reply. Can't click it. Perfect. That's what we want. So now I think that looks pretty good for the most part. So yeah, now what we'd want to do, we did have the issue with new lines not working. We can add break lines characters. Okay, we're going to get sidetracked for a second, but inside of our utility for the emoji convert con content to elements, we're going to have another else if. And how do we want to do this? Let's say or r is equal to there's multiple types of these, but we'll try R and an R. So if it's either one of these, we want to so want to do something similar to this. So we want to push a set of a span. Let's push a BR or a break line. Oops, did I do it wrong? Okay, we'll push that. Then otherwise, we'll just do the character. Otherwise, this might fix this. I'm the smartest man alive. So that was an actually a pretty easy fix. I forgot what the other bug we had was, so that's fun. I'm not going to remember what it is. Oh yeah, it's the emoji drop down. We can see even more of the emoji drop down now, and it actually lines up a little bit better. So I need to do some research on that. I want to look at the post slash really quick before we call it a night. We did a lot of debugging, uh, but we got some good work down. So if we scroll up to the top to our, so here's our create post. So maybe we do something very similar to this for our create reply. So let's just say export const. Create reply is equal to create async thunk. I probably shouldn't have started this because I'm not going to have enough time. Post dash reply. Async body is to be create reply body. I don't have a create reply body. What would I need for crit reply body? It looks like it's the entire thing. Well, let's do a reply. Reply will be a body. Reply will be a reply. Dunk API. This might make our life easier. Just try. Because we already have the author and, and all of that stuff, I think. Because we have the reply up here. So I guess at least we have the reply inside the global interface and the reply is author post reply content. And this is coming straight from Java. So author original post reply content images, all of that stuff. And we should be storing that in the post slice. So if we look in here, our current reply is a reply or undefined. So that should be fine. We'll set the check to make sure reply is not undefined before we make this but it is what it is let's we'll say const request is equal to axios await axios.post to http colon slash slash localhost colon 8000 slash 
So it's going to be post slash reply. Fair enough. So it was post. Let's just grab this post reply and we'll add the body in there just straight up. That's fine. We do need our headers. I'm just going to copy paste this to be ultra safe so we don't mess this up. OK, so our body is going to need to be the reply and the token. So let's go up here and we have our create post body. So we have an interface. And create forgot we need the token reply body and this will have the reply which is a reply maybe and this will have a token which is a string make sure it's lowercase and then we can come back down here so now this would be body dot reply this should be a create reply body now this will be body dot reply this will be by the token cool that's fine and then if that works we'll return the rec dot data otherwise we will catch exception e dunk api dot reject with value e that should be fine i think let's go down to our extra reducers now I straight up just want to try to create just a plain old reply. I might just straight up do a create with whatever dot fulfilled for now dot add case. This will be create reply dot fulfilled. Take in our state and our action. And to do this, we'll go ahead and we're not really going to do anything. I'm just going to go ahead and set the state equal to dot 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 state and then the current reply will be set to undefined. We'll set see I am whenever we do this we are adding to the post so I don't know what's going on with that but I guess loading will be false. The error will be false and the current reply images will be equal to an empty array and then we'll return the states so i think that's fine we're got we're not going to set any states or anything but now the very last thing that we need to do is in this we need to actually bring in use dispatch and we need to bring in the create reply uh create reply that's not it does it not create reply there we go create reply now let's go ahead whatever we post the reply instead of doing this we'll dispatch we need to set up the dispatch so const dispatch app dispatch equal to use dispatch and we're going to dispatch this will be the create reply and this needs to reply so the reply will be i think we should have post dates post dates dot and it'll be current reply we need to make sure it's not undefined so we'll say if our post state dot current reply then we'll dispatch this we want to make sure that it's not undefined and then we'll have our token which will be we need the user state we can probably just grab the token const token is equal to use selector state root states and this will be state Dot, I'm pretty sure it's user dot token and it should exist at this point if we're making a reply. So token will just be token. Okay, so now we should theoretically be able to create a reply. Now we don't have any way of displaying replies or anything like that, but we should at least hopefully be able to create a reply. So let's refresh this. We'll clear out any bugs and let's just reply to summer. We'll say attempting to create a reply. Fine. 400 let's see cannot integer 
mismatch integer oh you know what original post original post is an integer okay so we need to change this a little bit okay so we're gonna need to change this a bit huh so what we'll do is go back into our post slice we need to update the create really quick i don't i know i'm getting pretty long here this episode might be a little bit longer episode sorry about that so instead of this body we are going to create our own custom body so we're going to go ahead and say let's i didn't want to do this reply equal to our author it looks like we used a full-on author so author can be body dot reply dot author and let me just double check that inside the code and then original post original post is body dot reply dot original post dot post id okay reply content be body dot reply dot reply content our images we body dot reply dot reply or er, dot images our scheduled whoops scheduled will be body reply dot scheduled our scheduled dates this might be an issue we'll see body dot reply a scheduled date we might need to set this to null but it is what it is and finally pull body dot reply dot pull and we can take this reply and now we'll pass in reply here and save and let's try to make another reply really quick let's go to summer testing reply again 500 this time let's see post controller post service crit reply given id must not be null what does the body dot reply look like author there is an original post post 63 why is it not called post id i wonder i wonder if i put this information in wrong oh my goodness no way there's no way i screwed that up that long ago oh my goodness turns out it was actually my java code the whole time let's fix this there should be one more issue Okay, I don't think it'll affect our databases because I was already calling it post ID. I can't believe I screwed that up that badly. Does this have a post ID now? Still says post though. Now I'm not sure it's broken. But now I do have post ID set up properly. So I guess the next thing to do would be to just change the interface to post. And then of course, as soon as I do that, it'll probably start working. This is the next logical thing to do. So post slice, change that to post. And there's going to be other places where post ID is used. I just don't know where it's at. Like there. And where is this at? Feed post creator. What line is this? 39. Although post ID worked. That's the crazy thing. Let's try this one more time. Testing reply, no error that time. So if we go into our dbeaver, so there is a post reply in there, so that's good. And posts, testing reply. All right, so we can post replies now. We should probably close this whenever the reply is created. So on post reply, we also want to dispatch And this will be update display. This will be great reply. And let's do one last test. So close out of this. We'll say making another reply with only text. Okay. Check dbeaver. 
We can just go ahead and refresh our data maybe. Might have to open this up. Database, schemas, public. And let's see, so this is posts and refresh. Make another text only, okay. So there we go. Little bit of a struggle there at the end. So this is a little bit of a longer stream. We'll see how it ends up editing up. A lot of debugging and a lot of refactoring this episode. Hopefully next episode we can actually start working on doing some new stuff. We'll see. I need to figure out how to, you know, make the request with the images and stuff. But anyway, guys, hope you all enjoyed the video or the live stream. If you stuck around this long, I appreciate it. I hope you guys all have a great day, morning, afternoon, whenever you're watching this. This has been Ethan Nakoda. Have a great one. And I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream.